In this video you will learn about Datadive which is a software for Amazon sellers and it helps to make decisions on what products to sell on Amazon easier. So it will help you in the product research phase, also it will help you in the Amazon product listing optimization process as well. Check the demo in this video and if you want to try Data Dive with a discount, check the link below and use the orange click discount code to get $50 off lifetime. This video is part of the Demo Mondays video series where we invite different Amazon software tools to present their product just like this on the screen. And uh, if you enjoy our content, don't forget to like and subscribe below. And now let's welcome Data Dive. Hello Anthony, it's nice to have you here. Could you please introduce us to Data Dive and what problem does it solve for Amazon sellers? Hey everybody, I'm Anthony from Data Dive and Data Dive is a fantastic tool for breaking through all of the data that Amazon gives you and using it to make meaningful optimizations to your products. And if you're in the space of launching new products, uh, validating which products and targets you potentially want to acquire, Data Dive is going to help you make those decisions really well. Cool. And uh, for what kind of uh, users this tool is uh, uh, designed for? So Data Dive is really going to be most helpful for people managing brands at scale, right? So the really cool thing is that you can do, do dive after dive and it's going to save you hours of going in, uh, crunching all of those numbers yourself. So if you're someone who's managing many, many brands, if you're working for a company who's managing many brands, if you're working for an agency, uh, those are going to be the time uh, prime targets rather. Uh, aside from that, a lot of individual users use Data Dive as well, but uh, it's it's really used for working at scale. Perfect. And uh, what marketplaces uh, do you cover with your data? It works every marketplace. Uh, yeah, every marketplace that Helium 10 works on, because right now we work with Helium 10, we're pulling their numbers. So if the marketplace works there, it's going to work on Data Dive as well. All right, perfect. So I know that you have prepared some uh, presentation to present how Data Dive works and how users can get most out of it. So let's jump to the slides. All right, cool. Let's jump right in. Uh, this is going to be a, a rundown of Data Dive. I'm really excited. Uh, a quick agenda of what we're going to cover today. First, I'm going to go through like, what is Data Dive, a little bit better of an explanation than I just gave a few minutes ago. Uh, we're going to go through how to use Data Dive. And then we, we probably won't have time to get into this live ASIN teardown, but if there's some extra time, we might get there as well. With that being said, let's jump in. This is the essential framework and what is Data Dive. So Data Dive kind of started, you know, many years ago, uh, back with people were going and trying to get as much information as they could about the listings, about the keywords, uh, about the products that they were working on. And back then, everything was done in a very manual way. And so basically, you had these three guys, a lot of people know Brandon, but Florin and Glenn, that were basically uh, building out these really advanced automations in Excel. Uh, and eventually we're like, man, what if we could actually get together and build out a product that could help more sellers do the same kind of number crunching, uh, but without all of the technical know-how inside of Excel or in Google Sheets. And so like, this is something that we've been teaching inside of seller systems for more than two years. Um, I remember actually going and pulling all these numbers manually back in the day. And uh, so yeah, Data Dive, what it really does is, you know, back in the day, you had to pull all these numbers in from Helium 10, run them through Excel, run macros, run automations. Sometimes you'd have input errors. And so uh, Data Dive was really born with like, how can we take that same set of numbers, but upload it in one click into Data Dive and get people really meaningful reports uh, that they can start using to get insights on their business. And so Data Dive, I'm going to say right off the bat, for those of you who are using it, you know this, it can be a little bit of a complex tool. Uh, and so today we're going to walk through all of it. This is a really slimmed down version of what the UI looks like. We're going to show a lot more examples today. But basically what Data Dive is doing is helping you to identify uh, keyword competition, areas of keywords that have low competition and are kind of low hanging fruit, as well as identifying what are the areas where people are doing really, really well. They're very well indexed and are very good Amazon sellers. Um, so like I said earlier, Data Dive is almost brand new. We've only been around for a few months. Uh, we launched back in September 2021. In May, we hit our first 1,500 users. Uh, we launched our web app, transitioning out of Google Sheets. And uh, in the future, we're really expanding this tool a lot. We've got a huge dev team that's working on this. And uh, right now, part of this video is some of the SOPs, right? How to actually use it. And this is going to be walking through today, how to actually use the web app, right? And uh, recently, we switched from Google Sheets over into the web app. So this is going to be probably a very uh, welcome video for all the people that have been using it without much instruction up until this point. 
Um, earlier, you're asking like who's using Data Dive. The reality is everyone's using Data Dive. Uh, what's really great about the tools it speeds up work that used to take hours to do. And so, if you just have one product, maybe Data Dive won't be for you. But if you have a portfolio of products, you're consistently looking in at your competition uh, and you're trying to increase the value of these brands over time. Then uh, you should probably give it a give it give it a look. Um, yeah. With that being said, let's jump now into this is the meat and potatoes of the presentation: how to use Data Dive. And so you can, everything is going to go through the Chrome extension. You need a separate Chrome extension to actually get Data Dive to work. Um, but once you're inside the extension, um, basically we, we use the numbers that are run from Helium 10, right? We're pulling in their numbers at this point. And so there's two ways that you can start a dive. There's one which is just straight to X ray, uh, and that's the fast way. The, a little bit of the more precise way is using the ASIN tray. And I'm going to show you both of these because some of this is a little bit new, especially for new users. So let's go through the fastest way. This is how to actually start a dive using X-Ray. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is select the data dive extension up in the top right. Uh, and then you're going to want to configure your options. So you can just see what I have up on the screen already to exclude sponsored results, sort by sales, and highlight products younger than 90 days. We recommend doing that before uh, going into X-Ray just so your results are automatically going to be filtered. So that's inside of the data dive Chrome extension to actually get the dive started. You're going to want to start by searching your main keyword. For these examples, we're going to go with a dog bed. Then you're going to open up the Helium 10 extension and launch X-Ray. So you're going to see, okay, all the X-Ray results. If you have the data dive extension running, then you're going to see a few more options here. The first thing you're going to have to do is decide where you want your research to be placed. Uh, by default, it's going to create a new search based on the, the search term that you put in. Uh, but you can also choose it from any of the previous dives that you've done, right? And so this is really important as you start to go back in over time and you're uh, researching this category over and over and over again, looking for changes. This is where this niche tracker is going to be really helpful. Um, so in this case, we just renamed it dog bed project. Uh, when you actually have the x-ray results up, what you're going to do is you're going to basically go through and select the accounts that you want to analyze. What we recommend is trying to filter out listings that are not relevant, right? Maybe they're driving a lot of external traffic or they're just people you're not trying to compete with, maybe major brands or listings that are going to be sponsored. Obviously, you don't want to include those. So what you want to do as well is like when you're going through is to you can exclude the, the button using the blue button and it will actually exclude them not only from this x-ray search, but it will exclude them uh, in your niche tracker. If you search in dog bed again, now it's going to know to exclude that in the future. So, and you can see the list of excluded ASINs there. Um, it's also going to let you know when you're doing your x-ray, it's going to let you know, hey, this competitor was included in past research. So again, we're really going to get the most value out of data dive is doing this over a period of time, right? Running into these dives over and over again. So what you're going to notice here when you're running from X-Ray is it's going to research the accounts that you have selected here, and then it's going to also research your past competition. If this is your first time doing a dive, it's not going to show you any of these past competitors, so you're just going to be searching on this main list. Right now, we have a limitation before for older users of the platform. We used to have a limitation of 15 uh, competitors that you could search at once. Now you can have a total of 25 uh, between new competitors or past competitors, so just helpful to know. So basically with the X-Ray, what you're going to do is you're just going to go through and manually select which accounts you want, uh, analyze which ones you don't, and then when you're ready, you're going to click the dive button. So that's the fastest way to do it, really straightforward, really easy. The more precise way of doing a dive is by actually adding ASINs to your ASIN tray. This is a, something we get a question about a lot. People are like, how do I dive from the tray? So the whole purpose of the tray is basically so that you can create a page of only items that you've added to the tray. And so this has a few different reasons. I'll go to these in a minute. But what you're going to notice at the bottom of your search results is you're going to see a button that says Add to Tray. So if you click that, it's going to add it to the tray. You can also remove by clicking the Remove button. But basically, once you have added multiple items to your tray, if you open up the Data Dive extension, it's going to show you all of the items in your tray, right? This is everything that you've added there. And then when you click this button, search on Amazon, right? You can also clear to remove the tray. But when you click search on Amazon, what it's going to do is it's going to create a custom page with only ASINs that you've added to the tray, right? You'll notice here that it's just pulling all these ASINs and it's putting them on a single page. Now, why would you want to do this? It's because not all products are going to be assigned to BSR. Um, and so as well, you might be searching for competitors that you want included in your dive that come from a range of keywords. So here we're looking for dog beds, but what if I want like dog couch? 
and I want the top competitors from that. And so by adding ASINs to the tray, now I can create the search page and I can have everything, a customized page of only the competitors that I want included, right? Or if I'm searching in a category like overall best sellers, or I'm going into uh, a sub niche and I'm trying to see what are the best sellers in the sub niche, they might not always show up in X-Ray, which is why I want to add them manually to the tray. Um, so yeah, once you've added everything, you've got this page, right? You've got everything in your tray. Uh, you're just going to run the exact same process again. So open up X-Ray, uh, add and customize your niche name, and then uh, you can go and dive those products, right? So in this case, just everything selected and you would click dive. Right, these are your customizations. So once you click the dive button, it's gonna take about 90 seconds for the report to generate. Um, and as well, it's just worth noting that all of these searches are done within your Cerebral quota of 250 searches in a day. And so if you're diving like 25 ASINs at a time, you might actually get close to this, whereas you probably wouldn't hit your Cerebral quota normally. My advice to you there is if, you know, maybe instead of doing dives that are 25 uh, dives deep, you might want to go and do things that are only 10 dives and you'll get to that quota a lot. It'll take a lot less time. It's also worth noting that at any time while the dive is running, like I said, it takes 90 seconds, you can cancel it and then it, these dives won't be deducted from your cerebral quota. So once you actually dive the product, it's gonna pull up the website and this is the first page you're gonna see. I'm gonna show you around the tabs on the left-hand side, uh, just going through them in order. If you're getting to this point in the video and you're like, okay, I already know some of these, but I'd like to focus on different areas, then you can just use those uh, tabs at the bottom of this uh, at the bottom of this video to kind of skip around to different places. Um, the first thing that I want to go through is the niche pipeline. Basically, the niche pipeline is just a historical record of every dive that you've run on the account, right? So you'll see these all listed here. What I recommend doing is going through and renaming. It's just going to match the niche name to whatever the hero keyword that you're searching was. And so if you click the dots, you can rename that and make it a client project or something more meaningful. Um, you can also go through and add in notes. What's really important to note too is everyone's asking when we switched from the spreadsheets into the web app, how can I still get the sheets? You're going to do that through the export button here, and then you can export to whatever format that you'd like. And so a lot of agencies are like, hey, we still want to send an actual Excel file of the dive you know, to our clients. You can go and do that here. Uh, you can also go through and uh, basically just display how you want this uh, information to be presented as well. So that's the niche tracker. Uh, let's go now into the master keyword list. This is probably where you're going to spend most of your time. Uh, at the top of the page, we have a few different dashboards. Um, the opportunity evaluation gives you a holistic view of this entire category, this keyword that you're looking at. Throughout Data Dive, we have this color coding system where red is going to indicate high levels of competition and green is going to be low hanging fruit areas of opportunity. And so in this category, for example, it's saying that 60% uh, of our competitors are quite, or it's saying that 60%, this is 60% uh, is the relative level of uh, competition for the category. Uh, you can come to, these are gonna be set, the red, the green, the yellows are gonna be set off pre-made standards. But if you go into the Chrome extension for data dive, you can actually manually set all of these thresholds. So like last week, for example, I was on a, I was on a call uh, with a data dive user and uh, their level of search competition strength was like 98% and their whole category was all red. So in that case, you might want to go back, change your thresholds and say, okay, we already know this is a really competitive category. Let's see what we can do to, to work within this level of competition here. So you might want to go and change those color thresholds. Uh, the next thing here is competitor search volume strength. So this is just giving you a breakdown of the competitors by their relative level of competition. So this category, for example, is saying that at least half the sellers are what we are saying very strong, right? Just kind of breaking that down there for you. Um, the real thing that you're going to want to do aside from the dashboards at the top is looking down at the individual keywords in the master keyword list. And what this chart is going to show you is it's going to show you every individual word and then the relative position for this competitor uh, for this keyword. So in this case, you have Furhaven, they're ranked here eight for the keyword dog bed versus best friends is ranked 266. So the reason this is green is because obviously if we we're trying to help out best friends here, we probably don't want them to be ranked this low for the keyword dog beds. So this is kind of your area of opportunity, right? This is something that you would want to try to incorporate into your organic or to your paid, uh, paid strategy, right? The darker green it is, the more of the opportunity, the lighter green, right? Just hopefully make, that's making sense. As well, I think most people know this, but if you see a 307 on the list, that just means that, right, they're not indexed at all uh, for those keywords. 
This is also giving you a, a high level breakdown of your total search volume. Uh, you can also go ahead and export the master keyword list as an Excel. You can just go ahead and do that. Again, um, you just click that button there on the left. So on the right, rather. So for the master keyword list, right, when you're going through the big thing, same way we wanted to filter out competitors in the beginning, we want to filter out this data uh, for the master keyword list and filter out irrelevant or branded search terms, right? And so basically, as you go through, you might say, hey, we're not selling a pink dog bed, or we know Casper's a big brand, brand name, Carhartt's a big brand name. You're going to say, I want to exclude these from my master keyword list. So you're going to click these check boxes. You'll see this banner pop up and you click that, and then those will be excluded from the list. You can also go and exclude an entire ASIN, an entire competitor. So let's say you've gone through, maybe you just pulled up the uh, default from X-Ray, you just dive, you know, you just chose to dive the first 15 ASINs that popped up, and then you get there and you're like, oh, this one actually we shouldn't include. So if you click this checkbox here, and then you click the banner that pops up, you can exclude this from that ASIN search and from the niche as well. Uh, just it'll keep you a running total as well, just to make sure that you haven't excluded anything extra. Uh, you can just go up here and you can actually go through and see what your excluded uh, ASINs are, as well as your excluded keywords, excluded phrases. Really important to just keep going back and forth with this, just to make sure you're really cleaning up your list. And the only thing included on this MKL are keywords that you're actually interested in targeting. Right, so this is what it's going to show like when it's all um, you know filtered out. Right, you filtered out the keywords, you filtered out ASINs, and then as you go on, these numbers here, these calculations for these dashboards are going to uh, keep changing. Right, as you filter and filter and filter, and so what we recommend doing is spending the time to filter out in the beginning to make sure that these numbers are actually giving you an accurate depiction. When you first jump into a niche, it might be like, wow, this competition level is super low, but when you start actually uh, removing keywords and you start removing competitors, you find out it might be more competitive, right? So really important to filter out and don't just take the data from the start. Um, one really quick update, this came out, I think about a week and a half ago, we changed our relevancy from a standard number to a percentage. Uh, just something to keep in mind there. The reason that we did this is because we changed it as, as a percentage because in the past, you were only diving 10 competitors at a time. Now that you have the ability to uh, dive up to 25 competitors, Right? We wanted to change it to a percentage so that these numbers would make more sense. Right? So hopefully that clicks, but uh, just to give consistent numbering across, we're getting a lot of questions about that. Okay, so for outlier keywords, right? Outlier keywords are basically keywords that have a high search volume, high relevancy, but are generally underutilized by most of the competitors. And so you can set these manual settings for what you want your outliers to be. Right? You can toggle those right there. And then again, just like in the MKL, it's going to give you an overall view of the outlier keywords and how much search volume they have. So again, same thing that you're going to really be wanting to do here, right? When you're looking through these uh, branded keywords or these outlier keywords, rather, is you're trying to find keywords uh, that have really, they, they have a high relevancy, but they're not being indexed for, right? So you'll notice here that most of the competitors for this keyword dog sofa Right, you have 307, 307, not even indexed, 53. And then you've got this competitor here, uh, rank 38, right? And so we'd want to try to incorporate those potentially into our strategy. So it's helping us to kind of identify these numbers here. When you go through, right, you're looking through your MKL and you're saying, okay, we want to try to maybe incorporate pet supplies or dog accessories or dog couch, dog, all of these extra outlier keywords. You can go through, manually click these here. You'll see the banner pop up. And then when you click that button, now it's going to take these outlier keywords and it's going to add them back into your MKL. So again, you're just going to want to go through and take the, take the relevant keywords and pull them back into your MKL, right? This is what it's going to look like when it's all done. The key takeaway too here is that even if you're going through the outlier keywords list uh, and you remove something that might not be relevant to your current product, we get a lot of feedback uh, from other sellers that this is really helpful for getting inspiration for future launches, right? So you might not be selling that pink dog bed now, but maybe it's getting enough search traffic uh, and outlier keywords might help you to go and see that. All right, deep dive is one of my favorites because it focuses around uh, image optimization. Um, at the top of the deep dive page, you're gonna get a few charts again. Um, you're gonna have keyword search volume, page one domination. Keyword search volume is basically showing you what's the breakdown of where the search is are coming from for a range of different search terms, right? So in this case, you're noticing that dog bed uh, is, you know, dominating a large portion of the search traffic relative to everything else. 
versus like if it was really, really well spread out, we'd say, hey, there's many more opportunities for sales across these keywords. So a lot of our uh, larger clients out there, like aggregators, especially if they're going in uh, to acquire a product or to launch a new product in a category, a much more even distribution across a range of keywords is just going to be easier to go in and actually go and compete on that uh, product. So good to get high level insights there. Same thing too with page one domination. It's just going to show you a breakdown of all the sellers, right? And then if this was like one seller dominating this, maybe I wouldn't try to enter that category or try to compete versus this looks like it's a little bit more of an even distribution. Quarterly median is going to show you seasonal sales trends. Again, really helpful to get an overall view. These are based on the past three years. If you're going in and diving in a bunch of niches, niches you can kind of see there's some seasonality. As well, you can see the search volume trends uh, and see, okay, what's been the Amazon search volume? And you can kind of see this dog that product picked up a little bit around COVID. So again, just real quick for getting a high level view of that niche. Um, for deep dive, again, this is really for looking at listing content at scale, right? You can go through dozens and dozens and dozens of listings in a very small amount of time. What I recommend doing is hit the button for collapse all, and it's going to show you just the image galleries. Um, if you show the expanded view, it's going to show you some extra information about the product as well as sales and Keepa charts. So you can kind of reference like, hey, were there big changes in price relevant to when uh, sales are going up or is the listing uh, quite strong where there are changes in the listing to see, hey, where there's spikes in sales. What I, what I recommend doing with the deep dive tool is to start recognizing trends, right? What order do people have their images in? What types of images do you see in the galleries? And then what's the quality of these different images in the galleries? So what I'm always trying to do is to go through and say, okay, for this dog bed, I can pull all of the examples of sizing infographics and say, okay, we know we need a sizing graphic. Which one of these is the best? Which one is the worst, right? Here's all of the examples of like the materials, right? And so which one of these is the best? And so data, uh, deep dive is a really fantastic way to just speed scan through these image galleries at scale, figure out what's working, right? What's the order of the images people are using? And then you reference that with, okay, what's the level of competition that the seller is at? And if they're a highly competitive seller, they've got a good image gallery, then maybe I'm going to try to take some of those and apply it to my own brand. Battle of the titles is probably the area where people get most excited about because it's very quick and easy to make vast improvements to your listing. And so basically, this is a really quick way to go through. And what we do is we, we give you this value called ranking juice, which basically is breaking our, our estimation of what we think the combination of different words and phrases in this title is going to be uh, in regards to your overall ranking power on Amazon, right? So the higher number is better. And it's going to show you basically, okay, so for this uh, title with a ranking juice value of almost 5 million, the reason we have that is because we have all these individual words, right, with their ranking juice values and then how we're hitting these. And so as we have more, potentially the ranking juice value is going to go up, right? That's just a quick recap of that. Now, the whole point with this, right, is you want to have the biggest ranking juice title as possible that's relevant. These need to be keywords that you can actually go and convert on, that you can actually make sales on, but you really want this number to be as high as possible within that scope. And so, like, if we're comparing this brand, Furhaven, here to the Amazon Basics brand, not a very optimized title, right? It's Amazon. I don't think they really care so much. And so they have this ranking juice title of 83,000 because what you're going to note is that they're not hitting any of these keywords. Uh, in, in the forms that they want to be hitting, right? And so the key takeaway is if you are listing, if you're optimizing a listing with low ranking juice, right, you're going to want to go and create a new title with higher ranking juice and incorporate that over time. And we'll show you how to do that in the listing builder. Battle of the bullets is very, very similar, but instead of it being your title, it's going to be your bullet points. So again, we're going to have uh, the breakdown of what your ranking juice is and the calculation of what that number is based on the keywords that you've included, right? Uh, so in this case, again, Fur Haven quite low, Pet Haven almost 5.6 million, and you'll see that the reason why is because they've hit all of these words in these forms, whereas this Fur Haven brand has almost none. Uh, the key takeaway here is that the ranking, even though that the ranking weight of the bullets is going to be less when compared to the title, it's still super important. Most of the times, people have a pretty well optimized title, but very common. We'll get into the bullet points. We see that they're really well written bullet points, but there's just a lot of keywords that they should be getting credit for that sellers are not getting credit for because they're not included. Next thing that we're going to have on here is the normalizer. This is going to be uh, an extra tool that if you want to bring outside search terms, Google terms, you want to add extra things into your PPC campaigns, you're going to do that in the normalizer tab. And then on the keyword roots tab, this is basically going to give you a breakdown of uh, the individual words, right? So you pull this up. 
and it's going to show you here bed um, and then I can go and see all the different keywords and normalize keywords based on these routes. So this is going to be super helpful. This is probably actually one of the areas that you want to start the dive in in the beginning, just to get an idea of what are all the different keywords that I'm working in. And then from that, what are all the different routes uh, that come out of this? Just like the big takeaway overall is the more that you clean up this data, right? It's giving you a ton of data that you really have to refine and refine and refine. So the more that you're able to clean this up in the beginning, uh, early on in your dives and establish these niches, it's going to help you over time to get more accurate data. The last thing that I'm going to show here is the listing builder. Um, and the listing builder is, again, this is kind of the tool that you can use to go and improve what you're seeing for your ranking juice in Battle of the Titles and also Battle of the Bullets. So this is the listing builder. Uh, you can go and do a bunch of different uh, breakdowns here. Most common are going to be title and bullets. And basically what you're going to do is like just go through and start typing in the words, start typing in your title. And this score tracker is going to show you over time as you go through different versions of these titles, what's the ranking juice value. So usually over time, you're going to get a little bit better and a little bit better. Um, but you're just going to basically type into that box, right? When you click enter, it's going to recalculate the value for this ranking juice title. And then it's going to also show up here as my listing. So this is what you're actually editing in my listing builder. And you can see with just a few quick, easy uh, keystrokes, we're able to come up with a title that has much more ranking juice value than um, some of the other ones on there. Uh, you're, the input, the text input on the bullet points takes a little bit longer because you have to, you can't just copy and paste it in, uh, but you just go through and the exact same thing, right? Again, you wouldn't write your bullet points like this, but just to show you from putting these words in here, we're hitting a ranking juice for the bullets of 2.8 million. So you want to make it much more readable than that, but just to kind of show you how the tool works. And now you're seeing the calculation of the ranking juice and then the justification for uh, how and where you're hitting all those individual words. Last thing for real that I'm going to show is the niche tracker. And the niche tracker is, again, the whole point of doing data dive. If you're just going to use this for one single dive, uh, maybe data dive might not be for you. It might be a little bit too expensive for that. What data dive is really used for is people that are doing mini dives, usually mini dives a day, and you're doing this over a period of time. And so what the niche tracker is really helpful, helpful for is you can come in over a period of time, see how are all these different competitors Right. What, what were the factors about these listings that were changing? Right. What's the level of competition? How is that changing? And it's going to allow you to see this over a period of time. Profits, I'm not going to go into too much. This is a free tool that you can use. And uh, basically, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty quick way that you can go in. It's going to pull some of this information in for you already, but basically figure out uh, costs and expenses, shipping costs related to selling the product. So that's just an extra tool you'll find there down at the bottom. All right, Augustus, I think that's where I'm going to wrap it up today. I got to see how we're doing on time. If anyone has any questions, they can reach out to me directly. This is uh, first of many. This is just like a how-to. I, I hope this is like a quick start guide for people that are just first time using the web apps, coming from Google Sheets, or a first time user in general. Uh, we'll have more training in the future about, OK, you have all the numbers now. I know how to pull it. Like, What do you actually do with it? A little bit more of the strategy, but that's where I'm going to try to keep it for today. Cool. Thank you very much, Anthony. And uh, what is the pricing of Data Dive? So data dive is $150 a month US and I believe we have a code with orange click and they can get $50 off. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we will uh, share the code below in the description. So if you sign up with orange click code, you will get $50 off of your lifetime subscription. And uh, can you reveal us a few more features which you are planning to implement soon? I know you we are very excited. You said it's just a new tool already has a lot of stuff and you're working a lot. Can you reveal some? Yeah, the biggest thing right now that we're working on is collaboration tools. Uh, the big, a big portion of our user base are agencies, aggregators, like larger companies, you know, Amazon sellers that are managing large portfolios, right? They've been selling for years. And so the collaboration tools are going to be a really good way that people can go in and start doing different parts of this dive. Like in order to do a complete dive, it might take a lot of refining and data. So being able to share this across teams, um, that's one thing I can tell you for certain. I'd say one thing to get excited for in the future is something that's going to help you analyze images at a lot more deep of a level. But that is uh, that's probably a little bit further of a way out. But we've been getting a lot of interest and uh, have some have some things there. So I, I won't tell you too much more beyond that. But um, a lot of the a lot of the real things though in terms of user improvements are going to be small things that don't sound so sexy, but like going and changing, adding additions to the niche tracker. We just did that last week, making updates to uh, relevancy. So there's like a lot of small changes that the users will really feel, but they don't sound so fancy to say. Cool. Thank you very much, Anthony. Uh, those who want to try Data Dive, check the 
link below also the coupon code which gives you 50 percent off 50 dollars off thank you very much anthony and good luck in your business bye bye thanks so much if you think data dive could be useful in your amazon business check the link below to sign up for data dive and use orange click coupon code to get 50 dollars off lifetime and now i would like to invite you to watch other video with brandon yank the co-founder of data dive who talks about how to scale your Amazon business to seven or even eight figures.